loves me away that Rick and Leslie actually turned me in. I mean, two weeks suspension from the hospital? Well, that falls under the heading of teaching you a lesson. I'm getting a lot of that myself lately. Yeah. Well, at least now I have time for um, healthy breakfast. And let's see. Oh, I can go to all the after Christmas sales. Of course, I ain't got no money, but... Uh, you expecting somebody? Amy, my dear, I'm always expecting somebody. Lucky, my dear, who this morning? Let's see, shall we? Oh, just the man I wanted to see. Hi, Amy, how are you? You're not going to believe it. I've got the most fantastic news. In fact, it was so wonderful, I had to come over here and tell you myself. Mickey agreed to represent the band? Uh, no. You call that good news? Uh, well, darling, you really don't know Mickey. He doesn't even handle rock groups. Well, then we're right back where we started from. But he does know somebody who does. Oh, yeah, some guy with a kid going through real estate school. I don't need that. Oh, dinner. darling, you really don't know Mickey. He has promised to set up a meeting for you with the hottest rock manager in the business. Next stop is Starlum. Tell us about this guy. Okay, absolutely. Mickey says that he is the hottest manager in the business and that he is the one most in demand by all of the top groups. The guy's name is Mario Pirelli. Oh, I've heard of him. Sounds like a race car driver. Amy, he happens to be one of the biggest managers in the town. He manages all the big groups. And he also takes 25% off the top of some of the biggest paychecks. 25%? Well, if he's good, he's worth it. Oh, he is the best. And Mickey has promised to talk to uh, him about your band. All right, Tiffany, thank you. Sure. Now, just a minute ago, I couldn't go shopping. Now I can buy the entire store. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> Darling, let me tell you, take it from a veteran in the business. Do not cash your paycheck until it is in the bank and it has cleared. And even then, you might have problems. Gosh, I've always wanted to play Shea Stadium. That's where the Beatles played. You know them. Uh, you got to be kidding. Of course you know the Beatles. Of course. You know, they used to back up Paul McCartney way back <laughs> I'm just kidding. I'm just kidding. I tell me something, Tiffany. You think success will change me? It could only be for the better. Yeah, I could see it now. Gold records on the wall. A mansion. A mansion. My own recording studio. Oh, we could get cars. Oh, hold it. Hold it. Hold it. Slow down, you guys. Let me tell you. Just take it easy a minute. I mean, Mickey's going to get you the introduction. It's up to you to do the rest. Don't worry about it. All we need is our shot. Well, I think this Pirelli guy's going to want to hear you play. I'm going to do something real special with my hair. Or at least he's, he wants to hear a tape, I'm sure. I mean, Mickey can be very persuasive, but let me tell you, this Pirelli guy will not take you sight unseen. you got to show him something. I tell you what, why don't you try, just, just take your best song and polish that up. That'd be the best. Which do you think that is? I don't think it's been written yet. But I'll tell you something, I'm going to write the best song. I'm going to knock his socks off. <laughs> right. The poor guy doesn't know what he's in for, does he? <laughs> now, when is all of this supposed to happen? Uh, well, I'm not really sure, but uh, Mickey said he'd be in touch. I'll just let Blackie know. How's that? Yeah. I've really got to go, though. I have got a nail appointment, and I am so late. Yeah. Yeah. Thanks so yeah, much. Thank, thank you, you so much. We couldn't have done it without you. Oh, well, darling, you haven't done anything yet, but if I know you, I'm sure you will. <laughs> <laughs> okay, now, you've got to promise me one thing. I want a front row seat for your very first concert. Oh, you're going to be backstage, and I promise you that. I'm going to hold you to that, okay? All right. <laughs> Bye. Congratulations. Thank you, sweetheart. <laughs> okay, no, don't get too excited. Be cool. Be, be cool. cool. Be cool. I'm going to call Tommy. Be Tom Sino! Yeah, it's Blackie, what's happening? What about? No, 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 your news can't be as exciting as mine. Okay, Tiffany, right? Her agent. He's setting us up with this guy. He's the biggest rock man. His name is Mario Pirelli. What do you mean, who's Mario Pirelli? Come on, you're the businessman of this group. You're supposed to know these kind of things. I'm the artist. I take care of the music. Listen, he's just the biggest, hottest rock manager in this... Bi of course not. He's Well, he's going to want to see a tape or a gig or something. I don't know. Uh, why? Well, what... Why? Okay, I'll bring it. We'll be down there. Goodbye. He wants to see us at the university. What for? I don't know. He's got some kind of wacky idea or something. What kind of idea? I don't... Well, let's just go down there and see. I don't know. What about know. breakfast? What, uh, how can you think of food at a time like this, Amy? I'm starving. Well, I don't care. Here's your jacket. Thanks. Oh, man, I can't believe this day. I'm just going to make it a regular breakfast and everything. A regular breakfast? What do you want to be, Julia Child or uh, Pat Benatar? Come on. Let's go. Thank you. Hello, Mrs. Kelly. Well, Mrs. Peterson. What brings you down here? I'm here for the Social Services Agency. We're investigating a police incident involving a young man in your ward, Louisa Swenson. Oh, that. It was nothing, really. It uh, was hardly what I'd call an incident. Well, the police department would. It was all a misunderstanding. I, I didn't take it seriously. No? Well, you may not have, but let me assure you, our agency certainly did. Now, if you don't mind, I'd like to ask you a few questions. Well, to tell you the truth, it was all my fault. Yours? Oh, yes. The kids really didn't do anything wrong. I got a little worried when I didn't hear from Lou, so I called the police. Mrs. Kelly, 
Parents who are a little worried don't call the police. I overreacted. I think there's more to it than that. Well, as you know, teenagers get a little rambunctious from time to time. It's natural. I don't think it's anything that I would call wrong. Well, the department would. Frankly, I'm surprised at your attitude. Well, I know Lou. She's a good kid. She's underage. She was missing all night. And she was found the next morning in the company of a boy who has a police record. They were borrowing someone else's room at the time, to put it charitably. None of that strikes you as wrong? You're making it sound much worse than it is. It's bad enough without any help from me. What Lou and Blackie did was all a part of growing up. Many teenagers, uh, most teenagers, go through it one time or another. So you'd say you have the whole situation under control? Mm -hmm. Yes, I always did. There's really no problem here. And Lou is happy? Oh, yes. Of course she is. Why shouldn't she be? Well, here she is now. Lou, could you come here? I'm busy. Uh, there's someone I'd like you to say hello to. There are a friend of yours. I don't want to meet the Lou. Leave me alone. I, uh, I don't know what to say. She isn't usually like this. I don't know what's wrong with her. Well, if you don't mind, I'll just find out. Alone? Well, tell me. How long have you known Blackie Parrish? Oh, ever since I've been in Port Charles. He's my best friend. How long have you two been serious about each other? You mean going together? Uh-huh. Well, I don't know, actually. It sort of stuck up on us, you know. It, it took a while. But it's always nice when these things uh, develop slowly, don't you think? I suppose so. Well, they last longer that way. That seems like Blackie and I have known each other all our lives. It means the world to me. I can see that. How does he feel about you? He loves me. And what does Mrs. Kelly think of Blackie? Does she approve of you two seeing each other? Well, I really don't know what Rose thinks anymore, except that she obviously hates me. What makes you say that? Well, this whole mess with the police and everything was all her fault. I was so embarrassed. Blackie and I didn't do anything. She just wanted to hassle me, that's all. If she had her way, I wouldn't have any friends. Well, but I thought you liked Mrs. Kelly. From all indications, you were getting along very well here. Yeah, I thought so, too. Boy, was I wrong. What happened? Well, I don't know. It, it's like I'm a prisoner here now. She treats me like a child. The sooner I get out of here, the better. Excuse me. Um, Lou really should be getting to school now. What is the point? The day's already shot. Well, you just missed your morning classes. There's no reason why you can't make your afternoon classes. Oh, what do you care? I care very much, and you know it. Now, run upstairs and get your books together for school. Mrs. Kelly, there's no question that the girl is extremely unhappy here. <laughs> I think you, you just caught her on a bad day. Oh, I don't think so. With Louise's record of being a runaway, I think we're just tempting fate trying to keep her in a hostile environment. Hostile? Here, that's ridiculous. Not as far as Louise is concerned. What are you saying? I'm afraid we have an untenable situation here. Meaning what? Are you, um, are you going to take her away from me? Oh, well, that's not up to me. The department decides that. I do have to file a report, mm -hmm. however. With your recommendation. Under the circumstances, I don't think we have much choice. Louisa simply has to be placed in more sympathetic surroundings. I'm sorry. Good day. took you long enough. You must have a lot of stuff to take to school. Is all that books? None of your business. Lou, what's wrong with you? Why are you behaving like this? I guess the social worker was right. You're obviously not happy with me. You can say that again. Why? What happened? 
I mean, surely you're not so upset that I called the police about you and Blackie, among other things. Do you want to talk about it? Don't you think it's a little too late for talking, Rose? Well, I certainly hope you have some place to go. Well, what makes you say that? Mm -hmm. From the way the social worker was talking this morning, they're going to take you away from me. Good. If you're trying to hurt me, you're succeeding. I am tired of being a prisoner. Being grounded for two days hardly constitutes a life sentence. The sooner I get out of here, the better. What makes you think it's going to be any easier for you in the next foster home? Who says I'm going to any foster home? Oh, you know something that the Department of Social Services doesn't? I have heard of cases where minors de are declared legally independent as long as they've got somewhere to go and someone to live with. What are you going to do for money? Have you got a job? Or are you planning on finding an apartment where the rent is free? Those are kind of scarce. We will get by. We? Blackie and I. Does he know that? He'll help me. He, we'll live together. He, he'll know what to oh, do. Oh, Lou. You'll see. It'll be perfect. Blackie's just a kid, too. What do you mean, too? We are not... Kids, we can take care of ourselves. Will you please just come down to earth for one minute? If you would stop and think, you'd realize how ludicrous this whole scheme of yours is. Listening to you. Blackie is not about to drop out of college to support you. And how do you ever expect to make anything out of yourself if you leave high school? You'd be throwing your life away. Well, it is my life, and I will do whatever I want with it. Lou, will you please listen to reason? Blackie and I will manage. As long as we're together, we can do anything. <laughs> down here someplace, but the water front covers a lot of territory. Mm, I'm, I'm just waiting for Blackie. Uh, he had some music business to take care of, and uh, then we're going to go find an apartment. Lou. <laughs> well, you know, it won't be much at first, but, you know, we'll scrounge and we'll get things together, and we'll manage. Lou, I talked to Blackie. He came by after you saw him at the university. You okay? Oh, Rose. oh no, baby, I oh, know. No. <laughs> He didn't want me. Oh, no, that's not it. Well, that's what he said. Blackie likes you. He just realized that neither of you are ready to tackle that kind of a commitment. Not yet. I'm just too young. Story of my life, isn't it? That's what I was trying to tell you before. It gets different when you're older. I'm sorry you had to find out the hard way. You were right. I made a fool out of myself, no, didn't I? No, you didn't. No wonder Blackie turned me down. Now listen to me, Lou. You didn't do anything foolish. It's natural to show your emotions. It'd be a big problem if you didn't. You know, young love is beautiful and awful frequently at the same time. Everybody suffers through it. Most of us survive it. You will. Not the way I'm going, Rose. Don't try to change the way you feel. Not that you could if you wanted to. You do have to control yourself, though. That's not exactly one of my strongest points. Well, that goes for us old folks, too. What did you do? I was wrong to call the police. I let my emotions rule my logic. I was so worried about you, I didn't stop and think. Bad move. But, you know, if I had to do it all over again, I'd do it exactly the same way. The thought of something happening to you just scares me to death. I am so sorry for everything I put you through, all the worry about the way I was behaving, about what I said to the social worker. I didn't mean it. I know. Well, what's going to happen to me? I don't want to leave you. What are they going to do, put me in another foster home? No, not if I can help it. If you want to stay with me, and Lord knows I want you to, we're going to be able to work something out. Now, come on. Let's go home. Oh, I don't think I can face anybody. Well, <laughs> I don't think I can either, but we won't have to. It'll just be the two of us. No Jake, no Blackie. There's uh, one other thing you'll learn. Sometimes men aren't all that good for you. <laughs> oh, Rose. 